Hello there and welcome to the Worcestershire County Cricket Club 2024 season preview and kit launch. Coming up, we're going to have a catch up with some of the players, have a look at the new member benefits programme and find out what the club is doing in the community. Well, it's a packed show, so let's kick things off by speaking to the CEO of Worcestershire County Cricket Club and England legend, Ashley Giles. Ash, great to see you. Thanks very much for your time. Let's start with the difficulties that are facing the club as we stand at the minute. Flooding. Mm. How bad has it been? How challenging is it going forward? Yeah, really bad. Um, this winter will be one of the worst in history. We've had, I think now, six full floods mm. of the ground. An absolute nightmare for the ground staff. Uh, every time they get, get around to cleaning up, it, you know, we get another one. And that situation doesn't really look like it's improving. The, the stats of the last 24 years versus the previous 100 show that the, the situation's got worse uh, and the floods are getting more regular. So, yeah, for us, it, it's becoming a, a real challenge at the ground. And a real challenge for the ground staff. You've got to doff your cap to what they've been trying to do. Yeah, Stephen, our head groundsman, is um, is doing a great job. He's been on the so, boat, hasn't he, out in the middle of the ground? Yeah, he, he's he's found inventive new ways to stir the, uh, uh, you know, when these waters come in, there's so much silt and dirt lays on the grass. And and he's found a, a method of sitting in a dinghy and, and blowing a, a leaf blower into the into the water to stir it up. But he's doing a great job. We're very lucky to have him and, and the rest of his team, of course. So you're moving games away from New Road, not something you want to do, but born out of necessity. Absolutely, yeah. So we always request of ECB that we start the championship campaign away from New Road. So the first two games are on the road. Um, we were hoping that we would be ready for, um, what is the 19th of April was, was set to be our first home game. We're not going to be. So we've made that decision to, to move to Kidderminster. Kidderminster are, uh, you know, we've had a relationship with for a, a long time and they are our backup. Uh, and they've been a fantastic partner. But we've got a great team and I'm sure we'll work it through. Frustrating for the ground staff, for you, for the players and the members and supporters as well who want to watch cricket at New Road. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got a great supporter base. We've got great members and, and we've got a fantastic ground. You know, in all the questionnaires when you ask cricket supporters their favourite grounds at New Road always comes up. So is it sustainable for that beautiful ground to remain the home of Worcestershire County Cricket Club given that perhaps these floods are going to become more prevalent as the years go by? Well, we have to think maybe it won't be. For me as a CEO, I need to keep all options open. And one of those options has to be thinking about moving away at some point. One immediate injection of cash could come to the game via the sale of the 100. What have you made of some of the comings and goings and discussions and rumours that have sort of whirled around that? Yeah, I mean, it's the, it's the biggest talking point in the game. I think this year is potentially one of the... Uh, biggest moving years in cricket that we've seen um, or we will have seen for for generations. I think the 100 has played an important role in the game already. It's brought different audiences. What it's done for the women's game has been absolutely extraordinary. Um, but I think we're all coming to the the, the reality, to the, to the sense that the, the 100 offers us probably the best opportunity to grow revenues in the game, particularly right now. We're seeing a shifting market worldwide between what was the England v Australia, the bilateral sort mm -hmm. of cricket that, that we've seen you know, throughout history, to more of a franchise sort of state. A lot of these franchises popping up all around the world, led by the IPL, but we're seeing in America, we're seeing in UAE, uh, South Africa, and who knows before um, Saudi come online. You know, that, that could also happen. And I think for us, it should be, well, how can we make the 100 as good as we possibly can? And I think that's going to take some investment. Um, I'm sure there's some working through to do there. There's been a lot of consultation. ECB have worked really closely with us, which has been great. Uh, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure something's going to happen within this next 12 months. The 100 completely divides opinion. It'd be fair to say that one thing we perhaps can all agree on is what it's done for the women's game in this country. Where are Worcestershire County Cricket Club placed in terms of growing the female game? Yeah, so we're seeing in the game a big change again. Um, we've had a regional system, which we sort of partner with Warwickshire on, with the Central Sparks, which has worked very well. But now there's a move to further professionalise the women's game, which is great. I was having a chat with Chloe earlier. Where would you say the women's game is in the county at the minute? What are the strengths? 
Well, it, it's growing. We've got a successful team. Last season, we won the West Midlands Cup again. But as I just said, you know, I don't, I don't think we're we're doing enough in terms of support and resource. You know, it's one of the things I'm, I really want us to do is to to pump more support in that area. That's what we've got to be in the business of is producing players who go on and play for England teams, whether that's the men's or the women's teams. You mentioned the men's, a successful year on the field, promotion. Challenge is now to stay there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it will be a huge challenge. I mean, last year was fantastic. Off the field, we had lots going on. We, we had a number of players leave the club, which is always disappointing. But again, they go with our best wishes. These guys have been great ambassadors for the club for, for long periods, and, and we wish them well. And again, we've got to, to replace them. But the way the team was able to stay focused on, on the goal, um, particularly that of getting promoted, is huge credit to Alan Richardson, his team and the players, and the senior players particularly. I've said a number of times that I think if that were at some of the other clubs I've been involved with, that's, that's sort of losing five senior players that they could have imploded those dressing rooms and, and we didn't. So they should be very proud and, and getting promotion and two quarterfinals mm -hmm. in the white ball competitions. I think it would be close to the club's most consistent season you know, without winning anything, but mm -hmm. um, to, to compete across all formats is, is brilliant. How strong is the talent and the pathway that you have in place to allow those cricketers to flourish? Yeah, really good. Uh, and again, I keep making the point that we've got to continue developing players through our system. Even if they leave at some point, as I say, that's, that is just part of the game nowadays. You know, the, the, the gap does seem to be widening between the, almost the haves and have nots, mm -hmm. but that shouldn't change our strategy. Um, we've got to keep developing players. That's a, that's a big part of our, our role and purpose. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm happy with, with where we are on that front because it, if someone like Worcestershire isn't that, what are we? Yes, of course, we want to challenge for trophies. Yes, of course, we want to entertain our fans, but we've got to develop players as well. What about the role that the club has in the community? How strong are the ties? Yeah, really strong. And I think then when you, you, know, it, when you start talking about things like the ground and the flooding, and, and I know when, whenever I mention, well, you know, we have to think about perhaps leaving New Road at some point. Um, you know, it's an emotional and emotive subject for, for people in, in Worcester and our members. We are very much at the, the centre of the community. I mean, we're only second on the Monopoly board to the cathedral, so we must be, <laughs> we must be pretty important. And it's been there for generations. I think sometimes people think I've come in from, from the old enemy and I'm, I'm here to sabotage the whole, the whole club. Um, far from. You know, I've lived in Worcestershire for 25 years. I'm very proud of that. Kids are born in Worcester, married in Worcester. Um, and so if anything, it's about time I worked for Worcestershire and I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying it. Um, and again, I, I, you know, I know it's a big challenge, but that long-term sustainability, making sure if we get the opportunity that Worcestershire can almost eat at the big table, if you like, mm -hmm. and compete with those, those bigger teams, as well as maintaining that community feel that we are a different sort of club to Warwickshire and Lancashire. And earlier I talked about sponsors. I'd much rather talk about them as partners. And, and that's what we should be. We should be welcoming. We should be warm. Um, and ultimately, you know, my vision is for us to be sort of the destination of choice for life sport, for entertainment and hospitality in, in Worcestershire. Now, some would say, well, there's not a huge amount of competition at the moment. But in some of those areas, we're not quite getting it right at the moment. We know that. But, and we can be better, but that's what we're striving for. And I, and I think we've got the team that, that can deliver that. So despite the challenges that we've touched on, is your overall view of the county going forward one of excitement? It is, or yeah. Or trepidation I mean, at well, what might change? There's a, there's a bit of both, if I'm, if I'm totally honest. And I think the game stands in a very interesting yeah. place. There are the challenges, whether they be financial, whether they be ground. But then on the other side, I look at those opportunities and, and, and I am excited. Um, I, I love this role. It's my first CEO role. Um, it's a fantastic club. And all of the roles I've taken on, I've, I've always said I'm very proud to be part of that legacy. And nowhere more than, than Worcestershire. You know, it's got a really rich history. It's been through some rough periods, but um, you know, I still think we can, we can do some really good and exciting things. Appreciate your time. Thank you.
Now, to talk us through the benefits of becoming a member of Worcestershire County Cricket Club and what sort of customer experience you can expect, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Joe and Keely. Welcome along, guys. Joe, can I come to you first? How are you going to improve yourself and improve the customer experience at Worcestershire County Cricket Club? I think the customer experiences and giving a great experience to everyone we deal with is just actually absolutely central to everything we do at, at New Road and at, at the club, whether you're a supporter, whether you're a member, whether you're a sponsor, a corporate partner, um, whether you're just coming in for a meeting or an event there, it's our kind of role to deliver those great experiences to everyone in the community, um, adding value wherever we can, just giving over everyone we deal with that great time, really. How do you come into all of this and how does your company come into this case? Yeah, so we're Pluxy. We are an employee benefits provider, but in this case, we do member benefits. So we're supporting the cricket club in enhancing their member benefits this year. That kind of works around three pillars. So we've got mental well-being, physical well-being and financial well-being. So there's a whole broad range of things that we're doing across those three pillars. So it's really exciting just to try and get new members, create amazing experiences both on and off the pitch. Explain about the card, though. Yeah. So that's linked with Visa. Yeah, so the card's the really exciting bit. So it's a financial well-being tool. So they can use the card at local supermarkets and different retailers and merchants that we work with. But they can also use it in the cricket club to save off their merch that they're buying or the food on the day that they're going to watch a game. And then a contribution of that as well also goes back into the Grassroots Cricket Foundation mm -hmm. and the community. So, yeah, we're really thrilled to be involved in that. Just to be clear, this card is, is your, your membership card. That's what you come in with. I mean, has this been done before in cricket? No, um, it's first in cricket. So there's an all-in-one card, which works your membership card, so that gives you access to the, uh, the ground. You can then preload it, spend money anywhere. There's a massive range of benefits in terms of cashback through Pluxy with around 100 UK retailers. You can get some cashback, and every time you spend in one of those retailers, there's money going straight back into the foundation, into the community as well. But I think it's something we're quite proud of. It's given a lot back to the members. Yeah and something we can really build on. I think we'll probably grow throughout cricket as well as Worcestershire. Ashley mentioned community. Keeley's mentioned community. You've just mentioned community. It's such a big deal for Worcestershire, isn't it? It is, yeah. I think it's got lots of different meanings. It's got the community in terms of what's around us in terms of people, but I think we see ourselves as the centre of it, um, the centre of the community of members, supporters, the centre of the community of partners. We've massively grown on that side of it. We've doubled the amount of corporate partners the club's got. This year compared to last, membership's growing. It just feels really, there's a really good feel, really good atmosphere around the place at the moment. And we're kind of growing what we call that kind of uh, community uh, ecosystem, really, around New Road and Worcestershire. Just expand on the health and well-being yeah. side of this. What, in practical terms, does that mean? So as well as the card and the financial side of it, there's also the mental well-being side. So we're supporting them with a 24-7 helpline, so whether that's for um, a member calling about how they're feeling, if they're feeling a bit down or wanting to get over a life hurdle, but mm -hmm. it's also an information helpline as well, so to help with legal advice or any support they may need, we've got trained counsellors and trained support service. And then we also have the physical wellbeing as well, so that is gym memberships, fitness club memberships, everything locally as well as nationwide, so again the local community, like a local gym that might be down the road mm -hmm. or you might be travelling up to Wales and going on a holiday and you want to join a gym there as well so if you want to become a member then how um online in the ticket <laughs> office um there's the guys there to speak to take the um to take the membership we're always welcoming more members I think the whole the membership product it, it's more than just a season ticket you're part of the club you're part owner of the club and actually this is given a whole lot of value back in really important ways across those financial health and well-being pillars as well and I think in particular the mental health well-being side on that's something we're really super proud of to give that kind of counselling support, that loneliness support, especially when you look at the traditional demographics of um, county cricket members. I think that's a really important element to it and groundbreaking in certainly cricket, if not sport, speaking that sort of thing back. Brilliant. Great to speak to you guys. Thank you for your time. Now, I don't have to tell you, cricket is an incredible sport and it can bring so many people together. And it's always been the aim of Worcestershire County Cricket Club to contribute and work within the local community. Let's now join Foundation Director Craig Oakley as he travels around Worcestershire to show us the amazing work that they've been doing. I'm here at New Road, home of Worcester County Cricket Club, but as the Executive Director, I'd like to take some time to speak to you around the community work we do out in Worcestershire. As a foundation, you'd be surprised how far afield we reach from New Road. We engage with over 40,000 participants a year with our wide-ranging programmes from walking cricket and our half programme in the community through to our school delivery and recreational cricket club support. 
Our mission is to offer opportunities to every individual across all communities in Worcestershire, empowering a county that is active, inclusive and supported through Cricket for All. Today I'm visiting the heart of Worcestershire College in Redditch, where this evening we have two of our programmes running. There's Walking Cricket and the Chance to Shine Street programme. I'm going to find out just what these programmes mean to some of those taking part. Elsa is our Community Development Manager and oversees all community delivery for Worcestershire Cricket Foundation. So the Chance to Shine programme is fantastic. It's a free programme that runs most weeks of the year. We do it inside during the winter, outside during the summer and it's just great for those girls that they've got a session every week. Talking to some of the parents, it's, it's quite difficult for them to get into sports. So, you know, we go into the schools with the Chance to Shine programme and then the Chance to Shine Street is the exit route for the school programme. I've been playing cricket here for a year and I like the batting because it's really good fun. I like coming here because I like meeting new people. It's fun, it's good for your for physical health, it's good for your mental health and to learn how to play cricket at the same time. It's a really fun club and you can do a lot of things. Walking cricket, exactly what it says on the tin, it's a walking version of the game, typically for over 50s, but we're not exclusive to over 50s. We have a few people that have got injuries and stuff. Started with only a handful of people, three or four, but we're now up to about 15. There's great camaraderie. We all have a good laugh about it. And the, the way we rotate the game, um, you know, with a pairs of batters, a change of field positions, we all get a chance to actually do every bit of the game. Us going out into communities, especially the underrepresented groups, the disability groups, the low socioeconomic groups, I think the fact that we've got offerings for everybody now, it's amazing. And that's it for today. I hope you can see how much fun we've had at the session. None of this could be done without our passionate and positive staff, and we have lots of opportunities coming out over the summer, so keep an eye out. But for now, it's back to the studio with Ian. Fantastic stuff. Thanks for that, Craig. And if you want to get involved, go straight to our website for more information. So now the time has come. It's time to launch the 2024 kits. Take a look at this. In Worcestershire's embrace, we stand tall. A vibrant tapestry woven by the threads of all. In the shadow of the majestic spire, the roar of a captivated crowd inspires. Where Elgar's notes dance upon the breeze. Through winding valleys, hills and trees. Along the Severn, the railway winds. Capturing and enchanting hearts and minds. Our culture and heritage in history steeped a passion for community upon which we reap. But now, a new season about to be born. Here's to fearless warriors, ready to face the storm. Looks incredible, doesn't it? What a great way to launch a new kit. And two of our models are here alongside me, Brett and Chloe. Welcome along. Right, well, let's start with the cricket and let's look back to last year. County Championship, promotion, Division One. How proud are you and the team to have achieved that? Yeah, look, extremely proud. It was um, you know, a massive moment for the team last year to get that promotion, obviously going into Division One, as you said. We know that's going to present some challenges, um, but it's something that we're really looking forward to and I can't wait to get going. What did you do well last year then to have that success? I just think we did the basics really well for long periods of time and that was it. And I think what we've got with our group at the minute is a great environment, um, great people on the bus and, you know, we're all pulling in the same direction, which has helped. It does go up and down though, doesn't it? Promotion, relegation. So what's the key to staying up when you start with that easy trip down the road? <laughs> yeah, great question. Uh, yeah, the history tells you that we've been up and down a little bit in the previous years. So, you know, one of our goals is to get up and stay up. So I think, again, we're going to have to go up and play good periods of cricket for long periods of time. So it's something, as I said, that I'm really excited about. Chloe, how would you sum up last season for you and the girls? Uh, yeah, it was a bit hit and miss. T20, <laughs> T20 obviously, um, the rain massively affected that competition side. So um, pretty much washed out the lead up to the finals day. 
which meant for us that unfortunately um, we, we did get knocked out by, uh, I'd call it the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> um, but then, yeah, 50 over campaign, that was a perfect campaign for us, especially last season, finishing runners up in the 50 over campaign to come and come back and win it um, and bring the trophy back home. What did you learn then? What, what was the good things that you want to continue doing in that campaign into this year? I think it's the youth that we're bringing through right. um, from the pathway, um, the young cricketers coming through, uh, they step up straight away into the senior side with bat and ball. It's just exciting to see see what's coming through in, in that generation. How strong is that pathway, would you say? And how has it changed over the last few years? I mean, I think I've been at Worcester now 10 years or so. So when I was first on that women's side, the pathway or the youngsters in that side, there wasn't, there wasn't 17, 16, 17, 18 year old girls. It was all 20 plus. Um, whereas mm. now we're seeing, 50, we had a 15 year old girl make her debut last year in the 50 over comp and she took the ball and got five for in one game. Mm. And so just seeing that talent come through now, it's so exciting for the women's game. The women's game is expanding extremely quickly extremely exciting. I mean, now do you see like a 15 year old can look at cricket and think, I can make a career out of this. And also the support is there for her to do that. Yeah, I'd say so. I'd love to be 15 years old again, <laughs> for sure. Um, seeing how exciting that their journey they've got ahead, they can make a living, finish school, look at their qualifications and go, look, I can make a career in cricket now, off I go. Where would you say that the, the youth is in the men's side of Worcestershire County Cricket Club? What's coming through? How excited is the are you for the future? Yeah, extremely excited. I think we're a club that probably prides ourselves on producing our own players. I think you've only got to look back in recent history. I think we've we've able to do that. You know, Josh Tung obviously going on mm. to play Test cricket, product of the Worcester Academy. Obviously, Jack Haynes who's obviously moved on as well. But myself, like uh, myself, Joe Leach, Ben Cox has moved on as well. But all those guys have come through the system. So, you know, I think history tells you that that system's really good, and I think it's in a really really good spot. How's preparation going? Because uh, be fair to say the ground is a little damp. Yeah, you won't want to have a bat at the minute. That, that, that's, that's for sure. But yeah, it's obviously been a challenge, but it's something that we're, we're really adaptable to. And we've obviously done it over many years now. So we're out at Malvern College and um, put school there training. And then obviously the first couple of games might be looking elsewhere to play. How frustrating is that? Yeah, and I know Kidderminster is sort of like your second home, but you'd love to be at New Road. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it. It is what it is. But how do the players have to cope with that? Yeah, obviously it's a little bit disappointing, um, but as I said, you know, we're, we're pretty much used to it now. Um, as much as we like to be back in front of all our members at New Road, what we have got is a great membership that, that will follow us anywhere. So we're excited to see those guys at Kidminster. What's your preparation look like ahead of this season then? How does that work for you and the girls? Obviously the women's structure at the moment, as we know, it's a bit, it's a bit in the air with women's mm. county cricket. So Worcester have set up a great um, structure that we've got pre-season training available to the girls. Um, to cater around, obviously, at county cricket at the moment, it's not their full-time jobs. So we've catered the training around the girls to make sure that they can get their training um, and get to training alongside their own work. Now explain a bit about the Sparks Academy then, for those that don't know. Yeah, so the Sparks Academy is um, so the women's domestic um, structure side that is a product of Worcestershire, Warwickshire, Shropshire, Shropshire Staffordshire, um, basically covering all the West Midland regions and you get all the talented young cricketers and the senior sides go in to make one big team of Central Sparks uh, and, and they go and represent as a domestic pressure. Which is hugely team. exciting. Yeah, I know we've had a few youngsters that have made um, that transition from Worcestershire County into also the Sparks EPP, the mm -hmm. Sparks Academy and the Sparks Seniors First Team now. So that's even more exciting. Switching codes from red to white, what are your hopes and aspirations with white ball cricket this year as a, a side, would you say? I think just to compete in every game of cricket that we play. I think um, two years ago we went through a bit of a, a revamp with that, um, changed the way that we sort of tried to play the game of cricket. Obviously mowing, mowing was a huge part of how we played our game of cricket mm. and we were very successful at doing that. Obviously he's moved on now. so. It was about taking those reins and trying to push the team forward again. Um, but it's just about trying to give the guys freedom to go out and play and try and express themselves, really. We hear that a lot now mm. in cricket. It starts, obviously, with the Test match side. That's the, yeah. the, the headline act, I suppose, with Basball, if you want to <laughs> call it that. They hate that, by the way. Um, <laughs> do you take inspiration from that? Do you take any sort of direction from the freedom that McCullum and Stokes have given to the Test side? Does that filter down into the county game? Yeah, I think you'd be lying if you said you didn't look at that and, and try and do something similar. I'm not saying we try and mim mimic that completely, but um, to give the guys freedom, it's more about trying to allow them to take risks when they feel like they can um, and encourage them to do that. And if they fail, 
it's not braining him for that. It's it's actually encouraging to do it again and again because I think I believe that's a successful way how to play cricket, especially one day cricket. Sounds obvious, doesn't it, to just allow people to go out and play with freedom with no sort of consequences. There are consequences because members want to win and players want to win. But back in the day, my old day, it was like you played a big shot and you got pinned up against the wall by the coach. Things have evolved into a better place, would you say now, in terms of the management and the style of play you want to create? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's something that Alan Richardson and Kadir Ali have done extremely well at our mm. place is creating an environment where guys feel wanted and they want to, they want to be a part of that team. Um, and that comes through, you know, that fear of failure has gone a little bit. So it's about, as I said, going out there and expressing yourself. So they've managed to do that really well. And it's something that I've really enjoyed captaining. And John Lewis and, and Heather have, have sort of tried to bring that in a little bit in the women's game. Are you taking note of that? Yeah, definitely. I think the women's game is... is copying that sort of trademark, what we're seeing in the men's game and the women's game. I think that's the way that we want to be playing our um, type of cricket. We want to go out, like we say, express ourselves and play with freedom. If a batter goes and tries a shot and fails, mm. it's OK. Mm. We don't want to look at that and pinpoint them and say, why did you do that? Because we know it's their strength. Your name is synonymous with Worcestershire County Cricket Club. Your lineage goes right the way through. So where would you say the club is now? What's the buzz around the the ground now, obviously wet at the minute, but <laughs> what's the, the general feeling about where the club is going, what you've achieved and what you want to achieve? Yeah, there's a real excitement about the club. I think you've only got to walk around the ground with the personnel that are walk, uh, working there, sorry. Mm. Um, yeah, as I said, everyone's excited to be going into Division One. Um, the members have always been great at the club, so they're really excited. Um, so to get them back at New Road eventually, hopefully, <laughs> um, and, and playing some Division One cricket is something that we are extremely excited about. And Chloe, what about the atmosphere and the buzz around the club from your point of view? Yeah, I know that the women are so excited when we get to come and play at New Road. And obviously there's there's loads of um, Sparks fixtures being held at New Road and obviously the England matches as well. So yeah, it's just exciting to see that women's cricket is back at New Road this year and a lot of it. Well, good luck to both of you. Great to see you. Thanks very much. You look resplendent in your new Thank kit. Thank you. Thank you very much for being <laughs> good luck. So there you have it. It looks like 2024 is going to be a very exciting season. And if you'd like to know more about how to become a member, where you can get your hands on the awesome kit you've seen today, or just come to watch some great cricket at the ground, then please go straight to our website at wccc.co.uk. It only leaves me now to give a huge thanks to everyone involved in today's show. And finally, a massive thank you to you at home for watching. Bye for now.